It's like this, Pastor. When the prodigal son came to himself. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. When he came to himself, yes. God poured a little bit more water in. Uh -huh. Right? Thank you, Lord. Right? Can I get some rain? Yeah. 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 All right. Now the Holy Spirit's leading me while I do this because I don't have this written down. Right? Yeah. So then, when you get dumped in the water, right? Uh huh. He pours a little bit more water in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, when he fills you with the Holy Ghost, yeah. he says, okay, I think you can handle a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And you're set to the top. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Setting it up. All right? So I'm going to speak to y'all just for a few moments on the subject entitled Pursuing or empty. Now this has been resonating in my heart for at least probably about a week. You know, I told Pastor, I said, I ain't got nothing yet. I said, the Lord must be going to be doing something real big. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's awesome. The Lord will give me something I had it ready, prepared two weeks ahead of time. But this time, I had to seek it a little longer to figure out what he meant, Cody. Come on. Pursuing or empty. 
So y'all stand for the reading of the Word of God, Isaiah 55, yes. 6 through 7. Yes. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. Somebody say it's about to get good. About to get good. Amen. Yes. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Right? Yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And that's just one verse. Yeah. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. So that's a condition right there. Okay? Because there's a comma. Right. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Then there's a semicolon. That's a condition. And let him return unto the Lord, comma, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Somebody shout glory to God. Give, give God a hand clap of praise right now, because we're about to go somewhere. If y'all pray with me, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for his word. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for what you're about to do in this house tonight. Father, I ask that you'll open the hearts and minds and the spirits of these people here, Lord, to receive the word that you have given me to say. Lord, I pray that you'll anoint me with your sweet Holy Ghost. For you and I both know that I can't do this on my own, but with you I can accomplish all things. Father, have your way. Be glorified through everything that comes thus far. In Jesus' name, y'all may be seated. Amen. So now keep that verse open. Don't shut your Bible yet because I'm going to give you a little bit of something. Okay? Somebody say, I'm going to give you a little bit of something. So this verse right here proves there will come a time where the Lord cannot be found. Come on. Come on. Come on, Brother David. There will come a time where the Lord cannot be found. So we must seek Him while we can. Yes. Seek Him what without delay. Yes. Seek Him earnestly. Yes. A desperate plea. Yes. With passion. With desire. Not only this verse is telling us that, Jesus will abundantly pardon us when we repent and give our lives fully to Him. Yes. Most of us, could I dare say, that we have not given God our all. Have we? Because we're afraid to just trust him with our all. You know? Here, here you go. I'll give you half. And what do you find yourself? You've only gave him half. You still got the rest of the bowl to fill up. A passion. And a desire. Yep. That's something I crave. Yep. I crave the things of God, Kobe. I crave the things. I want more of Him. Why do I stay up all hours of the night? Because I want more of Him. Right? Yes. Seek Him earnestly. A desperate plea. Yeah. Listen now. We won't give Him our all because we don't quite trust Him just yet. But if we would just give ourselves away to Him... Come on. Give yourself completely away. Say there's nothing good that dwells within me. I think your Bible says that if you read it from time to time. There's no good thing that dwells within you, right? Come on. But if you give him your all, I promise you, God will have something for you far beyond your wildest imagination. Amen. Far beyond your wildest dreams. Let me tell you, God gives me dreams. And let me tell you something. He shows me more of who he is through those dreams. Why? Because I give myself away. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. But still, it's not full. Right? There's an old song, old worship song that says, Come away with me. Come away with me. It's never too late. It's not too late. Because I have a plan for you. I have a plan 
for you. Listen now. It's going to be wild, and it's going to be great, and it's going to be full of me. So when you give yourself completely and totally surrender everything that you are to him, then he can take you and say, come away with me and let me show you your wildest dreams. Let me show you your imagination. Let me show you just what I can do in your life. The cup's empty, right, Brother Kobe? It's empty. What did you just do? You poured out yourself to God. Let's read a little bit more. Yeah. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. Abundantly in the Hebrew is rope, which means increase. Be in abundance. To excel. Yeah. Be full of. To be full of. Yeah. He. Have you ever heard of that? Heap. A heap in helping of some country ham. A heap in helping of some black eyed peas. Well, Thanksgiving's coming up. A heap in helping of turkey. And don't forget that turkey gravy. Be full of, multiply, and have plenty. That's what God will do in your life. He'll multiply you. He'll give you plenty. Right? That's it. That's it. And then sometimes what happens as God is pouring himself into you, he keeps pouring. Yes. He says, let's just see how much you can handle. Yes. Let's just see. Yes. Next thing you know, you're to the top. Yes. We're going somewhere. Somebody say we're going somewhere. The idea here is that God will pardon or forgive every kind of transgression without exception. I ask you tonight, are you pursuing or are you empty? Because when you pursue God, He'll fill the bowl up. Come on. When you pursue God and He sees that you want everything, He'll fill the bowl up. Come on. He's, he's a perfect gentleman. So if you don't want Him, He don't want you. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Are you pursuing or are you empty? So let's take it a step further. As we go through this life, we are attacked by certain things. We are attacked. And what happens? I might make a mess here. But some of that water goes back in the cup. As we're attacked by certain things. This attack could come from Satan himself. This attack could come from another church member. Oh, yes, it can. Come on, I'm going somewhere. This attack could come from even yourself. This attack could come from your family. We have all things around this world trying to lead us astray. We have all kinds of stuff, like Pastor said this morning, that are trying to cloud our minds. Everything seems to be trying to take you away from your relationship with Jesus. But we must, I say we must, stay focused. We often think we have everything figured out, and we don't need Jesus. Kobe. I told him I was going to use him tonight. If I get water on the floor, It'll dry. It's just water. Somebody shout hallelujah. I need you to pour some of that back in there. Very carefully. See what happens? See? See what happens? Keep going. Keep going. That's good. Now sit right there for me because I'm going to need you again. Somebody can call me a hand tonight. Hey. Amen. Hey Amen. This attack can come from all kinds of things. And it's trying to lead us astray. We have all kinds of stuff that are trying to cloud our minds. We often think we have everything figured out. And we don't need Jesus. We think Jesus is supposed to show us every move we have to make. And we find ourselves getting tired. Getting miserable. Getting wore out. Because Jesus won't show us the future. But God is saying to you tonight, that's not how I operate. Jesus wants you to take the first step. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 
He wants you to take the first step. He wants you to take the first leap of faith. He wants you to be the first to witness to this person or to that person. He wants you to start climbing that mountain. But as God gives us the courage, not only the courage, but as God gives us the faith to take that first step, even when we don't know where we're exactly going, we find, listen now, this is good. We find that God is lighting the way that leads us. We often think, that it's in front of us. But I like to know that my God holds my hand. And when I don't know where to go, oh, I'm going to preach right here. When I don't know where to go, Toby, come here, come here. When I don't know where to go, He holds my hand. Lord, please help me. And I take a step, but guess what? He takes a step with me. Oh, man, that's good. When I, I'm just afraid to start climbing that mountain, but I take another step, and He takes a step with me. If I wander back, he comes with me. Sit down, thank you. Come on. Jesus is with you. As you take the step, God is lighting the way as he leads you. As he is the light that is leading us, we find something else here that's amazing. We are covered by the light. We want God to show us the end. When he's saying, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You keep begging him to show you, but God says you need to take a step. Yes. And what happens? Light starts coming on. As you take a step. Oh, this is getting good. Somebody say it's getting good. It's good. It ain't gonna make sense. But just to a few people. I've experienced some things here lately. Right? Yeah. It ain't gonna make sense. And some people are not going to understand why you're making the decisions that you are making. But you have to trust in the fact that the light is sending me. Oh, I feel him. I'm telling you. People will come at you when you start experiencing your anointing in stronger and greater ways. Come here, buddy. People will start to come at you. Come on, pour some more back in there. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. There you go. Now you got a pocket knife on you. <laughs> Who's got a pocket knife? Come on. Pocket knife, pen, whatever you got. I need something hard. I need something hard. Come on. Now, we'll sit this right here. And when they begin to get jealous of your anointing, I want you to pierce. Hold in that cup. Uh -huh. They get jealous. Now I'm going to leave that sitting there. Stay right there. I'm going to leave that sitting there. This is the first time I've done this. Y'all pray for me. But the anointing becomes stronger in greater ways because they're jealous of what you got. I've had people try to pull me to the left and to the right. And what I found is that I have to seek Jesus for myself. Amen. Because if I don't, Listen to what it's saying. I in them, and thou in me. 
that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So the request, listen now, for absolute unity is made five times. Verses 11, 21 through 23. This was to convince the world that he had been sent of God. But us out here in the world today, do we believe that he's been sent from God? A lot of folks out there don't believe that Jesus even exists. A lot of folks say that you're the only Bible I'm ever going to read. Yeah. You might say, Pastor Willie, I just don't understand. Well, that's okay. You don't have to understand what God does and how he moves on my life. My relationship with Jesus is different than yours. That's right. I'm going somewhere. Yeah. You say, Pastor Willie, how is that? Because he's a personal God. That's something that I read, amen? He's an intimate God. And he's not going to minister to you the same way that he ministers to me. He's not going to talk to you the same way that he talks to me. He's not going to anoint me the same way he anoints you. Glory. This is getting good. This does not change who God is by no means. He is still God and He ain't never going to change. I'm just telling you, me and Jesus got our own thing going. Come on. Me and Jesus, that's an old country song and a lot of people hate it, but I'm going to say it. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. So if you don't like it, then don't text me. Don't ridicule me after church. Don't send me an email because everything is alright between me And looking like you sucked on a sour piece of candy. Right. Just because you don't understand it. Right. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we had these things back in my day called warheads. And they had different levels of sourness, right? I say sour because I'm a country boy. Different levels of sourness. Just because you don't understand it. So when God moves on your life, you've got a warhead. Come on. Now I want you to go down a little further. you got a warhead. Get you another hole. Hey, hallelujah. you got a warhead that wants to suck the anointing out of your life. Come on. And snakes start popping up in the church. Give me another right here. Give me another. I'm going somewhere. What is yeah. Jesus. Glory to God. Leave it right there. You got a warhead that's trying to suck things out of your life. Yeah. Anyone remember those? Warheads. Oh, yeah. I'm only 28 years old, and I know I haven't heard it all yet, but I feel like I've been around the bend a time or two. God doesn't move on people like that. You're just in the flesh. Give me another hold. Give me another. Down right here. Come on. I want you to hold that right there. Hold it right there. Listen. Listen. God doesn't move on people like that. You're in the flesh. Well, tell me, how do you know? Do you know the mind of God? Because I don't. I've had people tell me the cross is not the gospel message. I've had people tell me that the devil is in the pulpit. Come on. Give me some more homes. Come on. Hold it. Come on. Come on. I've had people slander my name on Facebook. I've had people tell me you're just getting steeped in emotionalism. I've had people slander me. I've had people get up and leave right in the middle of my preaching. Really? But what do I do? I just keep right on preaching. I just keep right on saying it. I just keep right on worshiping my Jesus. Because I'm not up here to please you. I'm up here to glory my God. That's what we're here for. We're not here to hear a fancy something. But you're supposed to hear something that's going to change your life. Sick of this garbage. I don't know why I'm going here. I might just be mad or led by the Spirit. One. <laughs> Give me another. Yes. Right in the bottom. That's good. Hold it. <laughs> Listen now. You ran around the church. Oh, you're 
turned too emotional. No. You spoke in tongues. You're too emotional. You're too radical. You're this or you're that. Right. Well, you know what? I've come to the conclusion. Now listen now, I might get in trouble. But I don't care what you think. Come on. Let's go here. Y'all pray for me. Now I'm telling you, I need it. Y'all pray for me. Listen, I'm going to defeat this whole thing right here. Because I'm tired of it. God has moved on me in some miraculous ways that if you would have told me he would have done that, I told you he's lying, Pastor. Right. Now, I'm not bragging on Willie, I'm bragging on God. Now keep that in mind. But let's go here, just a minute. Now what happened with that cup? It's empty. Tell them it's empty. So that's what happens when people poke holes in your life. Come on. You sit down. Amen. Just a minute, just a minute now. But listen, I'm going to defeat this right here. What did David do? About the time, listen now, come on. he seen the ark coming around the corner. Come on. Oh, glory to God, I feel him. I'm telling you what, David, I feel him up here. I now realize why there's such an anointing up here because of Pastor Ruby Davis that she carried the anointing with her and the anointing still stays. The anointing doesn't leave. It's still here. Come on. But what did David do about the time he seen the ark come around the corner? Now, I'm paraphrasing. His wife said, now, don't you do that. Don't you act like that. You need to be dignified. Well, glory. Okay? I'll be dignified. Right? I didn't wear a tie today. I'm so sorry. You need to be dignified. But about the time. Somebody say about the time. About the time that the ark come around the corner. He could help himself. He flew off his clothes. And he saw the gates of the field. And so the glory of heaven. He didn't care if he was hurt. He didn't care what he was hurt. He said, I'm going to worship the Lord in my own personal way. Hey! Somebody give him praise. Man! Oh, he could help himself. He stripped his clothes and danced before the Lord with all his might. You don't know what God's done for me in my life. So quit trying to fill me with holes and make my cup empty. Come on. Come on. I can't help it. God's done amazing things in my life. I've just got to praise him, Pastor. I've just got to dance before him. God has done so
Billy Graham said this. I'm, and I'm going to hush on this topic. I promise. Billy Graham said this, and I'm going to, yeah. Emotionalism. He says we have too little. That's why we're losing church people to other interests. We need not only to capture their minds. Listen now. We've got to touch their hearts, Brother Cody. Yes, we got to touch their hearts. We've got to make people feel their faith. Yes. I don't know about you, but when God moves on me, I feel Him. Yes. I don't know about you, but when He filled me with the Holy Ghost, I felt it again. Yes. I don't know about you, but when He gave me a second dose, I felt it again. Yes. I can feel it in my hands. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel it all over me. Yes, I shall. Hey. We got to make them feel their faith. Instead of sitting there like a dog on the wall. Thinking somebody lost your dog. If you go to church and it's for it, it's time to move. But even when you go through this stuff, now listen. I'm still talking about pursuing or empty. But God helps you to be able to pursue. Yes. I'm trying to hurry. I may not get through all this. God's trying to get you to pursue. So he says in Galatians 6, 7 through 8, Be not deceived. Come on. Cole, you felt bad. I know you felt it in your foot. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. Hey! And then what's God do? He says, okay, they may have punched holes in you. I'm going to give you a new cup. I'm going to give you a new cup. Amen. Hallelujah. And in this new cup called, he puts his own personal mark on it. Yes. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, yeah. notice two things about this cup. It's got a personal mark, Brother yes. David. Amen. Right? Yep. It's empty. Right? Yeah. But it's a little bit bigger. Oh, Shoot, you there. It's a little bit bigger. Than this cup. Amen. It's a little bit thicker than this cup. Yes. And this cup, Brother Cole, it ain't got no holes in it. Come on, I'm going somewhere. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Billy Graham said this also. I don't understand the Bible and all that it says. I'm just told to believe it. I'm concerned. This is what I'm concerned about. It's pleasing Jesus and stay focused on him. Now listen now. I ran out of water, so I'm going to use mine. So what God does is He starts filling the cup back up once He sees you're pursuing Him. But He don't fill it up all the way. Listen now. Because sometimes, oh, this just come to me, hallelujah. This just come to me. Listen now. Yeah, give me some more water. This just come to me. Listen. Listen. He don't fill it all the way. Because some people say, I want to pursue Jesus. I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to pursue it. But that, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got to take some baggage back with me. Because I don't think Jesus can cover that. Wait just a minute. People start pursuing Jesus, and before you know it, Pastor, they end up walking way far back than they ever was. And when you walk away from Jesus like that, my Bible says that it's seven times harder to get back to Him. So He's not going to give you a whole cup of water of the Holy Ghost if He can't trust you with it. That ain't in my notes. He's not going to do that. He wants to know. I, I think they're willing. I think they're ready. They give me permission. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. Don't let people determine your walk with Christ. Don't allow false teachers to come in and sway your mind. Pursue Him. Are you pursuing or are you empty? I'm trying to hurry. Y'all bear with me. 1 John 2.27 
but the anointing which she had received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and it's truth, and it's no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So if I abide in him, he continues to fill my cup up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he gave me some more water. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, wait a minute, I like that cup better. Now, if it falls, somebody just pray for it. <laughs> now, you have to guard your anointing. Yes. Right? Yes. You have to guard it just a little bit. Yes. You have to guard your faith, as Pastor was talking about this morning. I didn't know he was going to preach on that. You have to guard your heart. You have to guard your joy. Your peace. You have to guard your happiness because people will try to steal it. Not only people, Satan will try to destroy it. They will try to run you down. And you end up saying, I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord, of preaching. I've said that, and I'm only 28. Because of people. I'm tired, Lord, of trying to please everyone. I'm tired of trying to play this Christian game with all the fiery darts the enemy coming at my way. Lord, I'm tired. I have found out. I'm talking about when people ask you what's wrong. I'm just tired. I just don't know. Sometimes even during the day. As I was praying and seeking God for this message, I didn't have my title until the very end. First time that's ever happened to me. Are you pursuing or are you empty? I've noticed that when times get hard, people tend to stop worshiping. They stop digging into God's presence. Yeah. They quit going to the altar. I wonder why our altars ain't full. Because they're tired, they're miserable, they're broken, and they don't realize that what they need is found in Jesus. And so they are still doing all the same things and still going to church, but more and more empty because they're tired of their frustration and their misery and their trial and their test. Let them to stop pursuing God. Are you pursuing Him? Satan wants to try everything he can to make you stop. Yes, he does. He wants to put everything in between your relationship with God. Why do you think that we have all this junk in the world that's not of Him? Because He wants you to lose sight of the real focus. Pursue Him. Yes. If it keeps you from getting closer to the Master, then it needs to go. I don't give a rip what it is. If it keeps you from getting closer to God, then it needs to go. Well, I could just dibble dabble right here. No, sir. I can let my boy watch all them Halloween shows on, on the tablet. They're just kidding. As Pastor said this morning, what they put in, my boy's only three. Imagine if he watched Halloween all the time. How would he be when he grew up? If I didn't share the love of Jesus with him, how would he be? If I didn't read his Bible story, he said, Daddy, we got to read our Bible story before I go to bed. I'm tired, son. I don't want to. Just one. You never know what that just one Bible story might do in his life. That's right. That's it. I don't give a rip what it is that needs to go if it's not strengthening your relationship. Nothing is more important than bringing your kids to church. Nothing is more important than teaching them the values of Jesus. Nothing is more important than worshiping Jesus. Kobe, you and your significant other are getting married soon. And let me tell you something. There's nothing more important than your relationship with Jesus. There's nothing more important than your worshiping Him together. A family that prays together stays together. You have to worship with your wife. Nothing is more important. Stop being so distracted and start pursuing Him. You feel empty? You feel burnt out? You feel miserable? Pursue Him. I'm trying to hurry. 6.59. Somebody say, clock, slow down. You know what else happens when we let someone or something steal our energy and our focus?
us before long, we think that we need to stop going to church. Because that's the only thing that's optional on our plate. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you. I don't know about you, but when I come to church, it rejuvenates me. It cleanses me. It washes me. It purifies me. It gives me joy. It gives me relief. Tell me one more time. Church is not optional. Tell me one more time that you can get just as much enjoyment out of watching it at home on the internet. Go ahead and tell me that. And I'm going to say, let me ask you this question, you professing Christian out there. Are you watching the live to make a difference in your life? Or are you watching it to poke some fun? Come on. Uh, are you commenting friendly faces? Come on. God don't like that. No, sir. Come on. I, no, I'm going to leave it right there. I better leave it right there. I better leave it right there. Are you watching it just to point your fingers at this one and that one? Let me ask you. Do you get the same Holy Ghost movements at home? Do you get the same warmth and the love that you feel from God's people at home? Do you get the same thing as being in the house and worshiping with His people? And when we are all in one mind and one accord, God comes down and meets with us and there's no telling what my God is going to do. There are some services where you say, oh, you just had to be there. Oh, I just can't explain it. Well, tell me, how can you feel that at home? If you can't explain it or you just had to be there, you wasn't there, you were sitting on your blessed assurance. I'm trying, I'm really trying. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I therefore the pressure of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Colossians 1, 9 through 11. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all His wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all His might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience, long suffering, with joyfulness. His will and not the will of others. The will for others is this empty cup with holes in it. But Jesus desires to give you a new cup with a covering of His protection. What's His protection? The Holy Spirit. Because it helps you to discern what's right and what's wrong. What else is His protection? It's His blood. Right? Because His blood covers a multitude of sins. Right? Man, this is good. Yeah. Quit telling me you're tired. Quit telling me that you are fine. Quit telling me, well, one day, one day I'll get back to my calling. One day I'll get back to what Jesus wants me to do. Stop. Because your one days are going to run out. And you'll be standing before God speechless. <laughs> because you didn't follow your calling. That's it. That's it. God's called some of you in here to do something and you're still sitting on your blessed assurance. It's time to get up and take a walk. Stop telling me that. Because if you didn't do what he's called you to do, you want to blame and curse someone else's ministry. You want to blame someone else and curse someone else's ministry because you want to stay put. That's not anyone else's fault, honey child, but yours. It's not God's fault because you made the choice. You made your bed and now you can sleep in it. Or you can do this, get up and start walking. You're not tired. You're not losing it. You're not less annoying. You're just empty. And people has punched you full of holes. And you might have been serving about 30 years. And you're empty. You're not just less annoying. You're just empty. And it's time for God to fill you back up. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. And I'm going to hush. Because pastor's going to get on to me. Now. 
What's God do? As you ask him to fill you up, he says, well, let's see here. Now there's a little bit of water on the floor, but it's okay. It'll dry. But everybody start running out the church. It's okay. Now listen, that's what God does is he fills you up to overflowing because he says, hey, you trust me. You're going to take my hand. You're going to walk with me. So I'm going to fill you and let you start drinking from your soul. Fill me back up, God. Say it. Fill me back up, God. Maybe what you need is I'm coming to a close and they come on up to the piano. Maybe what you need is a real intimate encounter with God. In time in His presence. Not another time of sitting on a pew and hearing a sermon. What you need is not more knowledge. But instead of just sitting there, dig in. Lift your hands. Invite His presence into the atmosphere. Even if you feel tired, miserable, or wore out. Even if you feel empty. You know what I have found out? It's when I do this and I invite His Holy Spirit to fill the room. He does just exactly that. And He doesn't have to come. But He always does. Hallelujah. He don't have to do what He does. But He always does. And He shows up in the middle of my situation. And He changes the whole room. He renews my mind. He renews my thoughts. He reignites my passion and my desire for more of Him. I preached this many years ago. When you get serious with Christ, He'll get serious with you. Jesus is the only thing that can cure your emptiness. You say, how do I do this, Pastor Willie, as they begin to play? It's simple. Change. Start pursuing Him. And He will trust you with a bowl full and run it over to where you've got to drink from a saucer. Why? Because you're pursuing Him. You say, how do I do this? It's simple. Repent. It's simple. Turn. How do I pursue God? Prayer. On your knees in prayer. Not five minutes and you're done. Seek Him. While He Seek him while he may be found. Because there's going to come a day where he says, That's it. I'm done. And he's going to call us all home. And they're going to have a last minute opportunity to seek him while he may be found, even though we're called home. But why wait that long? We have the freedom of this nation to seek it while it may be found. How do I do this? Through fasting. Push your plate away, it won't kill you. How do I do this? Go out to the world and compel them to come in? I'll tell you this, quit asking how and just start walking. And let the light guide us. Pursue you. Quit asking and just ask God to fill you up right now. Ask yourself. Quit looking for another word from a preacher. Quit looking here and there. We've been granted full access to the throne room of God. So what are you sitting around waiting for? What are you moping around for? As I already said, whatever you need, God's got it. You need the Holy Ghost. You need God to lead you to your calling. You need God to show you things. God's got it. You need deliverance. You have access to the I am. You have access to the God of this universe. So dig in or tap into God's presence. Begin to pursue Him. Lift up your hands and magnify the Lord. For He is worthy. <laughs> he is so worthy. Guess what you just did right there? Guess what you just did? You pursued God. Come to the altar right now. I'm asking you. And let God move in your life. Because I'm telling you, the glory of the Lord is in this house. And He's about to move upon you tonight. 
Come to the altar and let God move in your life. I promise you, if you pursue Him, He'll pursue you. You don't have to be empty. You don't have to let people punch holes. But come and let God perform a miracle in your life. Last time I checked, He's still a miracle working God. He's still in the saving business. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the baptizing business. I want these altars full. I'm going to start praying. I'm asking you to come. I'm going to count to ten and I want you here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want you here.
glory begins to fill the temple. And his presence begins to radiate throughout the world. Because he desires the true worshipers that worship him in spirit and truth.